So is the Indian Army politicized? Is the Indian Army being used increasingly for political means rather than for strategic means? Now these are answers that very few people can give with a lot of credibility. As I looked for answers, I came across Lieutenant General Prakash Katoj, former veteran from the elite special forces of the Indian Army. Now here you have a man who has not only been tested in battle, he was wounded leading a team of commandos into the Golden Temple during 1984 in Operation Blue Star and is also a man who's commanded a special forces unit in Sri Lanka, has commanded the Siachen Brigade in 99 when the Kargil War was on and he's also a man who has led a strike corps which is one of the most elite formations of the Indian Army. Now he has been watching the government very very closely and he's been writing extensively about a number of issues that has come up and he had some very very interesting insights. So key question, has the Narendra Modi government done enough to bolster India's overall security as well as bring in modernization of the Indian military? Let me begin by saying that when this government came to power, they came with a tremendous majority and the expectation was very, very high. But as far as the defense and security is concerned, I think uh, the focus has been mainly only on Make in India because that involves trade and manufacturing. Why it has been so is because we have a unique Ministry of Defense which is solely manned by bureaucrats. And you can have a bureaucrat coming in from the Ministry of Animal Husbandry. So the military expertise is lacking there. You have new ministers of defense and the Minister of States for Defense who don't have any military background. But they are dependent solely on these bureaucrats to give them advice. Now initially the Prime Minister started off very well that, you know, it was given in the media that every month he is meeting the the three service chiefs, etc. But that fizzled out in no time. So what is happening is that even in Make in India, you found last year the Minister of State for Defence, Dr. Bhamre, briefing the Prime Minister that your pet project, the Make in India, is floundering because of these bureaucrats who are unaccounted. So we don't really have a roadmap. We are only doing shadow box. First one, I would say that this government should have immediately initiated defining a national security strategy and undertaken a, you call it comprehensive defense review or a strategic defense review. Because unless you have that as a starting point, how do you know in which direction you have to go? Where do you know what are the national interests of India? What are your national objectives? And based on this only, you can start with a long-term uh, defense acquisition plan. Now recently it was also given that uh, you know like the the Niti Aayog will come out with a 15 year uh, defense plan. What expertise do they have? There's been a lot of coverage on the surgical strikes and something which could also be described as propaganda is being done about the surgical strikes that the Indian Army Special Forces carried out against Pakistan after 19 of its soldiers were killed in the Uri sector in Kashmir a couple of years ago. The surgical strikes also became a major campaigning issue during the Uttar Pradesh elections. So I asked General Katoj, are the operations of the Indian Army also being planned with a political future of this government in mind? The surgical strikes was an excellent operation. It's not that we've not done transporter operations earlier, but this was at a bigger scale. And total surprise was maintained. Tactically, it was an excellent operation. When you start politicizing it by saying that, you know, Pakistan has learned a lesson now, and there's going to be no more terror attacks. What all has happened in the past two years? Have you done anything similar after that? It's a question of, do you have the capability like the Israelis have that you hit within 24 hours? No. But as far as the politicization of the military goes, let me tell you that every government has tried this. In fact, it's on record that when uh, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi wanted uh, the army to straight away get into East Pakistan, you know, Sam Manekshaw that time told her, aside from other things that I want preparation, he told her point blank that two of my divisions 
or in penny packets in villages in West Bengal to support your election. That is part of politicization. Other things which are happening in the, you know, the use of the army today. For example, you, you are cleaning garbage left, right and center. Why? Isn't there a civil administration? Isn't there police there? But you don't want to penalize those who are littering because they are the guys who are going to give you votes. Last week, you find that the Himachal High Court has uh, ordered that the military should clear encroachments. Isn't there a police? But if the police goes, there may be violence and then you may have less votes because elections are coming. If you use the army, still there may be violence. But then what will happen is there will be FIRs against the army. Even when this overbridge was launched by the army in Bombay, you know, the, the first thing you had the defense minister, the railway minister, blah, 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 blah. But then a chairman of the railway board, former one, wrote on the social media, why is it being given to the army? The railways are very much capable to do it. When the Bofors came, it was an excellent gun. There was a press conference of the defense minister, defense secretary sitting on one side, General Sundarji sitting on one side, media. How the Bofors gun? So General Sundarji said, it's an excellent gun. What about the price? Sorry, not the job of the army. Please ask the defense minister. That is not happening today. Today, there are chiefs who are voluntarily talking about weapon system that the price is okay, where the price is not even talked about. There are things which are happening, say, for example, this opening of cantonments, where voluntarily the military hierarchy is making uh, statements which are obviously political, politically motivated. So then you what you also see is that the media is, you know, then every second day talking about these service chiefs. That is politicization.